And gentlemen, we are live. Everyone get in the stream. It's so awkward not having an intro because I'm just here live and I have to do stuff on my end when the live starts. So I'm totally like awkward pause in the beginning. Do me a favor, guys. Share the broadcast. Like the broadcast. That's going to help us out tremendously. We are going to be jumping right into it tonight. So we are in episode 157 of Friday Night Fire. Well, Monday Night Fire used to be Friday Night Fire, but here we are, episode 157. We have a lot of stuff to cover tomorrow night. We have the Domino Revival Meetup in Manteca, California. They added a 9 o'clock showing, so if you didn't get your ticket and you still want to go, 7 o'clock is sold out in Manteca. There's a 9 p.m. showing, and I'll talk more about that later. And then my daughter's doing amazing. Thank you guys for praying. She fell and broke her elbow on Thursday, and they said she was going to need immediate surgery on Friday. You guys all started praying, and then we went to a doctor that night, and he said she's only going to need a cast for four weeks. So I'll announce that as well, uh, the update on all that. But thank you guys for praying. We really, really appreciate your guys' prayers. We covet your prayers. Okay, tonight we're going to start on talking about cursed items. We are jumping into it. No long intro. We're jumping right into the content. We have a lot to cover. The stream tonight... Some of you might say, well, brother, I know not to do these things, these cursed objects you're going to talk about, these cursed items. But you have to understand, I'm not only teaching you about this to equip you so that when someone says, why is a Ouija board bad? Why is burning sage or incense bad? Why is having a statue of Mary bad? Hello, we're going to make some people mad tonight, but it's okay. I'm going to give you scripture. Why is it wrong to burn sage or to burn incense or to have dream catchers? A lot of the stuff we're going to talk about, cursed items or objects, you're going to have a reason. You're going to have a reason for them of why it's wrong. So it's going to be information heavy. I don't just want to tell you, get the dream catchers out, get the Ouija boards out. I want to actually give you a reason why and tell you what these things are all about. And then also you guys have to remember, we're reaching 200,000 new people every single day on YouTube. So not everyone that watches this channel is a believer. We are trying to reach unbelievers. We are trying to reach the lost. And so we're going to be telling you about this stuff for also people in the new age, people involved in witchcraft, people that don't know this is opening you up to demons. And ultimately, all of the stuff we're going to talk about tonight are an open door to demonic spirits. So this is an equipping stream and also a warning to unbelievers of the danger. And some of you have cursed items in your home right now as we speak. There's something in your home. I'm going to give you 10 items, but there's something in your home that you have that you need to get rid of. Here's what I want you to do. Obey the Holy Spirit. Don't just take my word for it. Now, some of the stuff is overtly, you don't even need to hear God on it. Like if I tell you about Ouija boards tonight, you don't even need to hear God on that. Get rid of it. But there are some things the Holy Spirit's going to reveal to you. You need to act on it. Don't wait. Don't let those items talk you out of giving them up. Don't let those items talk you out of sacrificing them. If you know it's demonic, if the Holy Spirit speaks to you, get rid of it. I want to make sure my house is a demon-free zone. As, as parents, as believers, it's your job to make sure your house is a demon-free zone, that demons do not have legal rights, legal access, or authority to your house. I'm going to take authority over my home. I'm going to take authority over my life. All of these things can apply to your home, but also to your personal life. So it's my job. Some of you need to man up as parents, as mothers, as fathers. It is not your kid's job to make sure that demons don't come into your house. Because the likely is they're going to end up the ones bringing them in through stuff that they watch, they listen to, they do, and they get involved in. So your job is to keep your house clean. I'm not giving the devil a foothold. I'm not giving the devil an inch. I gave the devil 19 years of my life. I'm not giving him an inch of my home. How dare he think he's going to step foot in my house? come and wreak havoc in my home and take away the peace and take away the joy and bring his demons. My job is to make sure my home is a place that is full of the Holy Spirit, full of the presence of God, and not full of unclean spirits. So it's your job to be the priest. Set the standard in your home. Well, my kids are already older. Here's the thing. Come on, chat. There's a saying that my mom used to have, and it is, if you live in this house, you live by my rules. And I don't know where that saying went. I don't know why there's people that don't, we don't do that any longer. But you need to make a, a decision. If it's my house, it's my rules. And one of the rules of my house is demons are not allowed to live here. Unclean spirits are not allowed to live here. This is where the Holy Spirit lives, not demonic spirits. So make that decision tonight. This is going to be a place where the Holy Spirit lives. Our house, it needs to be somewhere where we feel protected. When someone breaks into your home, it's the worst feeling in the world. My, my wife, as a kid, had a home break-in. She's still scarred to this day. It's a terrible feeling to have someone break in your home. And some of you, like myself, are good at protecting your home from natural intruders. But you need to know it's not just natural intruders that you need to protect your home for. There are spiritual intruders. The Bible calls them demons. And they're spiritual burglars. They want to get into your home. 
Your home alarm system is the Holy Spirit. Now, the alarm system doesn't kick out the demons necessarily. The alarm system lets you know they're there, and it's your job to take authority over them. So don't expect, well, the Holy Spirit's in my home, and I don't have to worry. I can do whatever I want. There's this weird notion that we can live however we want in disobedience to God, and the Holy Spirit's just going to protect us. That's not biblical. That's not biblical. I'm going to be the one when the Holy Spirit shows me to remove it. Don't just tell the Holy Spirit, hey, if you want me to get rid of this dream catcher, just burn it up or throw it out. No, you're going to have to get the conviction of the Holy Ghost, grab the dream catcher, and throw it out. I'm, I'm serious, guys. This stuff is spiritual. This stuff matters. You have to see the danger that demons bring. You have to see the danger of what they want to do to your marriage, what they want to do to your family, what they want to do to your ministry. There's a seriousness. Okay, We wouldn't own a house that has no locks. Would anyone in here own a home that has, hey, we want you to buy this home, but by the way, there's no locks in the home. You wouldn't buy that house. How are you going to have a house with no locks? Yet many of you do. You have no spiritual locks on your home. You have no spiritual protection on your home. And remember Matthew 12, we are also houses. Now the Bible calls us houses that demons live in. So when we're talking tonight, yes, physical house. I'm in my home studio, by the way, so I'm in my house. But also tonight, not just physical house, but spiritual house. So I want locks on my spiritual life. I want locks on my home. We're talking about spiritual locks. And you might think, oh, it's just a natural thing. No, what we're talking about tonight is spiritual and Satan wants to wreak havoc on your home. First, second Corinthians chapter two, verse 11 says, we don't want to unwittingly give Satan an opportunity for more mischief. We are not oblivious of his sly ways or his strategies. So tonight, this is about exposing the strategies of the enemy. And I know there's some religious Christians like, I don't think we should talk about the devil, brother. And I don't understand. You watch movies that glorify him. You hear about him all week long. And here we are exposing him and you're mad about it. So all I can say, and I'm, I'm trying to say this respectfully, go cry somewhere else. That's my famous saying. I don't know what else to tell you. If you're mad that we're exposing darkness, Ephesians chapter five tells us to don't partake in this stuff but expose unfruitful works of darkness. So that is what we're doing. We're exposing the unfruitful works of darkness. The devil is constantly plotting and scheming, looking for ways to infiltrate your home. He's trying to sneak in. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy your marriage. He has tricks and tactics and a team of demons working around the clock, trying to destroy you. So he takes his job serious. I don't know why the church doesn't. I'm confused why we don't take spiritual warfare serious. I'm confused why we don't take spiritual matter serious. If the devil takes these things serious and he's serious about destroying you, I'm going to be serious about defending myself, defending my kids, defending my wife. Remember, Adam's original job was to protect his home. Genesis 2.15, then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden and told him to till it and to keep it. So he was not just called to be a certain type of farmer, which is to, t is to till it, but also to keep the garden. And the word keep in the Hebrew means to protect, guard, or watch over something. So God gives Adam a home and says, don't just garden and do work, but watch over your home. Why would you have to watch over the Garden of Eden? Why would I need to watch over my home? Well, if you keep reading, there's a snake that gets into the garden. Adam, what are you doing? You're supposed to be guarding you're the Garden of Eden, and here you have now a snake getting in, broke through that hedge of protection around the garden, because remember, garden speaks of a type of hedge of protection, and the snake snuck in. So we're not letting the snake sneak in. We've been given all power and all authority over every foul and unclean spirit. We are called to keep guard. I'm not going to let the snake in. God gave Adam authority over what? Subdue the earth and have dominion. He had the right to tell the snake to leave, but he didn't exercise his authority. And we already know what happened with that. This, uh, the snake caused them to sin. Eve blamed Adam. Adam blamed the snake. God's like, I can't forgive the snake and kicks Adam and Eve out of the garden. So don't allow the devil to deceive you. Don't allow the devil to talk to you. Crush the snake tonight. The snakes are trying to get in your garden. The snakes are trying to get in your home. It's no different than what he did then. He's trying to come in through television, come in through entertainment. First five letters, E N. T-E-R, entertainment. Enter is the, is the first word of entertainment. And he's trying to enter in. So we are going to lock the spiritual doors. We're going to get serious tonight. We're going to go into number one here in a moment. First Peter 5, 8, the Bible says, be sober and watchful because your adversary, your enemy, the devil, 
walks around as a roaring lion looking to devour someone. So what is the devil doing? He's walking around. He's looking for someone to devour. So what are you supposed to be doing? Sober up spiritually and also physically. Y'all, I don't know what you sipping saints are doing out here. Don't drink. Drink is poison. Drink is like a snake bite, the Bible says. Go watch my video on drinking. Don't drink, but be spiritually sober. And then what else are you supposed to do? Be watchful. I got to watch the doors. I got to make sure nothing's getting in. I got to look at what's going on in my home. I got to be responsible. Don't just give your kids access to internet and not be responsible. Your kids, I don't even know why they have access to internet anyways, but you need to be watchful. Like, I don't understand how you're giving your kids TikTok and then you're just letting them scroll in TikTok as what, what are we doing out here? You're giving the snake access to your family. No, no kid should be scrolling on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube shorts, letting the algorithm tell them what to watch. There's legitimate pornography all throughout TikTok and all these social media, and you're letting your kid watch this and you're letting the snake in. It's time to stand guard. It's time to stand guard. Like what benefit? Some of you think, well, the devil doesn't attack Christians. Let me ask you, what benefit does the devil have just attacking people he already owns? I don't understand this. We're like, the devil doesn't attack Christians. We don't need to worry about him. He's your adversary. He's the ruler of this world. He's the enemy of your soul, the Bible says. He's seeking someone he may devour. You got to give him permission. He's looking for permission. So if he already owns the world, he's the ruler of this world. And the Bible says, and everyone in the world is under his power. Who is he going to try to attack? He already owns the world. He's not going to waste his time on them. He's trying to get to the Christians. Now, of course, he uses celebrities and people influential in the world to do his bidding, but he's after Christians. I hope you're seeing this tonight. He's not after the people of the world necessarily. He's looking for another way in. Okay, we're going to go into reason number one here in a moment. I want to show you one last thing to set a groundwork here. This is going to be a long stream. I'm just saying, okay? John 10. Jesus says, I say to you, he, does, he who does not enter by the sheepfold, but climbs in another way. So he doesn't enter through the door you think he'd enter. He climbs in another way. That man is a thief and a robber. But the one who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the gatekeeper opens the sheep, hears his voice, and he calls him and leads him out. Okay. What does the thief and the robber do? John 10, he climbs in another way. The way you think the devil is going to enter your life is not the way he's going to enter your life. He's not going to come with, you know, horns and a trench coat and a pitchfork. He comes, as the Bible says, an angel of light. So don't listen to me tonight and say, that's innocent, brother. He's coming in another way. He's looking for another way in. And some of you, maybe you're getting harassed right now by demons. You're hearing door slamming, footsteps at night, Bibles are being thrown off the shelf. Uh, you're hearing noises around the house, dark figures around your house. These are what people would call poltergeist. And that just means polter is a German word that means a noisy demon and, or, and geist means demon. So these are noisy demons that are cr trying to wreak havoc in your home, trying to cause fear in your home, trying to cause disturbances in your home. But I want to tell you tonight, you can get rid of them. You can get rid of them. It's a real thing happening. And we're going to rid our homes tonight of every unclean spirit. Now you might say, well, can demons dwell in homes? Of course. Demons can dwell anywhere they're invited into, anywhere they're given permission. In Revelation 2.13, uh, John says, I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. This was a physical dwelling place. Satan had his throne in this city in Revelation chapter 2. So demons, just like the devil, can dwell in physical locations if you give them right. We know Ephesians 4 says, don't give a place to the devil. If you don't, I'm trying not to shout and scream and run around my little office here. If you don't want the devil in your home, stop inviting him in your home. You're like mad at Jezebel, but you keep inviting her over. You're mad at Delilah, but you keep going to her barbershop to get your haircut. You're mad at Bathsheba, but you keep taking a nap with her. Don't invite Jezebel for sleepovers and she won't come. If you invite the demons in, if you have these cursed items tonight, you're inviting demonic unclean spirits in. So don't give the devil room. You're not going to have real estate in your mind. Come on, come on, chat. Where are you guys tonight? It's getting quiet up in this church here. You're not going to have real estate in my mind. You're not going to have room in my emotions. You're not going to have room in my relationships. You're not going to have a place in my body. And you're not going to have a place in my home. Like, he's not paying rent. So kick him out. Those demons aren't paying rent. Let's make him homeless tonight. Some people, when they have demons in their home, they move out of their house. Go, oh, my house must be haunted. And it's a real thing. 
Houses are haunted. Demons are there. But demons don't move us out. Write this in the chat. We move demons out. You don't need to leave your home. You need to kick the demons out. If you're hearing footsteps, noises, voices, whispers, bed moving, sheets moving, things looking through your window, things getting thrown off the shelf, do not move out. Tonight is your night to move these demons out, okay? It's time to remove the items from your home. There might be an item you don't even remember that you have that's giving that demon legal right. Because if the demon's there, it has a legal right. So why is it still there? Why does it keep coming back to my house? We need to remove these items because items become a gateway for demons to torment you and interact with this realm. They need a point of reference, like a Ouija board, which we're gonna talk all about later, is a point of reference to get for demons to come in. I dealt with one girl that said she was a part of the Illuminati and as we were talking, she said, a voice is telling me to kill you. And I said, what are you talking about? She said, I have a poster. This is what she told me. She was a normal, sane, regular girl. In fact, I knew her before I was saved. I used to party with, with her. And she ended up getting saved through our revival at our house and ended up getting delivered. And I'll never forget, she said, I have a poster of Tupac. And literally, it was a poster in her home, an actual poster. And she said, these demons made me sign a contract. They enter into that poster and Tupac talks to me. And the way I communicate with demons is through a Tupac poster. Now, you might say, that's stupid. That doesn't make sense. The demon was using a physical item to interact with her. It was a point of reference. So Tupac poster... It's like, what? That's so random. But the demon was using it to speak to this girl, okay? So these items can have demonic powers. I did deliverance on one young man that was in a very violent gang, and the demon of death wouldn't come out of him, and the demon said, I'm attached to his ring. Well, his ring was given to him, which it sounds very morbid and it is terrible, for taking someone's life. It was a demonic ring, had a skull on it, and he got the ring because he took another person's life. And until we got rid of that ring, we burned that ring, the demon wouldn't leave. The demon was attached to the item. I dealt with another young man who had a scroll on his neck. He thought it was a prayer scroll. He got it from Israel and there was a demon literally destroying his vocal cords. He couldn't sing on worship. He had all these vocal cord issues. During the deliverance, the demon said, I'm not leaving. I'm attached to the necklace. We pulled off the necklace. He thought it was just a souvenir from Israel. Turns out it was a demonic item. Once he got rid of the necklace, the demon immediately left him and he, all of his vocal cord issues were resolved. What am I saying? Demons are attached to idols, okay? To items and to idols. So number one, we got a lot to cover. Number one category is accursed items. This is the thing that God has told you to get rid of and you haven't gotten rid of. And I wanted to put this as number one because when I got saved, I had a whole bunch of stuff I shouldn't have had. Bad movies, bad video games, bad music. I didn't have a preacher tell me. The Holy Spirit told me, get rid of this. This will cover every, the, uh, the other nine things I talk about are considered accursed items. But this is specific to if the Lord tells you to get rid of something tonight and you haven't gotten rid of it, the item becomes a curse. So like I said, it was my music, it was my video games, it was my ungodly uh, movies. It was all these things that God said get rid of that I got rid of because I didn't want to have something that was a curse. What has God told you to remove? Oh wait, what has God told you to get rid of? The drugs, the alcohol, that beer, that vape, that old music? that demonic movie you're obsessed with? What is it that God is telling you right now, get rid of this thing and you know what it is. That t-shirt from an ex-girlfriend, an ex-boyfriend, these are accursed items. Look at what Deuteronomy 7.25 says. The graven images of their God shall, be, shall burn with fire. You shall not desire the silver or gold that is on them. Do not take silver or gold for yourselves. Inherently, let me just interject, there's nothing wrong with silver and gold, but look at what God says. Or you'll be ensnared by it. So God says, don't take the silver and gold. Well, God, what's wrong with it? Don't worry. I'm telling you not to take it or you'll be trapped by it for it's an abomination to God. Neither shall you bring an abomination, an idol into your house. So here we have biblical precedent. Don't bring idols into your house, which yes, tonight we're going to talk about having a Virgin Mary statue and if it's okay to have it or not. We're going into it tonight. Don't bring it into your house. Then what, this is what it says, Deuteronomy 7 lest you become a curse like the item. So if you have a cursed item, an item God said, don't touch it, you can't have this, and you keep it, you become a curse like the item, the Bible says. But you shall utterly detest and abhor it, for it's an accursed thing. So someone comes under a curse when they take the accursed thing under their possession God says don't have. Accursed in Hebrew means devoted things. Things are devoted to God. God says that's for me, not for you. I don't want you to take that. I don't want you to touch that. 
when you take that thing for yourself that God says don't take, don't have, it becomes a curse to you. We see this in Joshua chapter 6 with Achan. He stole things devoted to God and a curse came on him and his whole family. And the way they broke the curse was they killed his whole family and destroyed um, all the items, which thank God were not in that old covenant law of Moses because the law of Moses says if you have that accursed item, not only does your whole family get killed, but the items have to be destroyed. Praise the Lord. Somebody needs to be excited tonight. We're in the new covenant. Praise the Lord. In Acts 19.19, 19, some of you might say, well, is it biblical to get rid of these things? Look at what Acts 19.19 19 says. Revival breaks out and people begin to cleanse their home. It says this, and many believed and confessed and showed their deeds. One, of, one translation says they renounced or they confessed their secret sin. Many of them, which use curious arts, this is Acts 19, 19, they brought their books together. These are witchcraft books, okay? In the Bible, yes. And burned them before men. And they counted the price. It was 50,000 pieces of silver. That's, I think it was like 2 million US dollars it equivalents to. 2 million US dollars. Why? They felt the conviction. They confessed their secret sin. And they burned their curious arts, their witchcraft. Now, interesting that some translations say sorcery, magic arts but the king james calls it curious arts and it's so fitting because people are curious about this stuff i'm just curious i'm using a ouija board because i'm curious i'm burning sage because i'm curious and right now we have angela uchi heaven and healing podcast in the chat she was involved in all of this i'm i'm sure i'm positive tonight she can say amen to all 10 of my points tonight because she was involved in a lot of the stuff i'm going to mention in this video these things and how is it that Someone comes like her comes out of the new age and says, don't play with crystals. Don't play with Ouija boards. She knows this stuff. Don't use tarot cards. Yet you have pastors that are telling you it's okay. Like, what are we doing? Pastors are like, it's no big deal to use tarot cards or do astrology or have charts or have statues. She'll tell you it's a problem. She came out of that world. Yet pastors think it's a big joke tonight. It's not a big deal. It's just an item. The item gives power to demons. So what do they do with the items? They burn the items. This is something I did. This is something Angela did. This is something a lot of believers do that get saved radically. We burn them. We don't sell our idols. Well, it's worth a lot of money. We don't sell our idols. I'm sorry. We don't sell it. If you have a big old bundle of marijuana in your room, well, don't burn it because that's, that's what got you here in the first place. I was going to say burn it, but I don't want you to get your last high by burning it. Throw it out. Go find a dumpster to throw it into. Go get rid of it. Throw it in your trash right before they come and take it. Don't get, don't sell it. Don't try to, we don't sell idols. We don't sell them. Okay, we burn them, except for marijuana. Don't burn marijuana. Everything else, burn it. Curiosity. Why are they called curious arts? Most of what I'll talk about tonight is called curious arts. Why? Because the devil uses curiosity to get you into the new age. He uses curiosity to bring you into witchcraft. It's one of his strategies. It kills people all the time. They say curiosity killed the cat. Literally, curiosity will kill you. Some people say, well, I'm just looking into these things, but not realizing these things are alive. You're not just looking into the Ouija board and just checking it out. The Ouija board's looking into you and checking you out. So these items, they get animated by these unclean spirits. Okay, so the items give the unclean spirits power, give the demons power. When you open doors, I'm just going to tell you this. This is very important. Unwanted things come in. When you open doors, unwanted things come in. You can't open your garage door or your front door tell, and tell a mouse not to come in. Tell a hornet not to come in. You don't open your front door and say, all right, fly, you can't come in. When the door is open, unwanted critters come in. And in, in this case, spirits into my, Matthew 12, house and into my above me, my actual, I'm in my house right now, my home studio, into your actual house, okay? So be very careful. Number one is the cursed items. If God says get rid of it, don't tell God why it's okay for you to have it. Hey, Isaiah, I want you to get rid of all your video games. Well, God, you don't understand. The video games are fine. I'm not addicted. God says you are addicted, Isaiah. Get rid of them. Well, God, it's not that bad. He knows. No, if God says get rid of it, he knows why he's telling you. So if you keep it, number one is the cursed items. Number two, this is a big one, crystals. I want to say this off the bat. We do not need to look to a crystal for healing. We look to Christ. We do not need to look to a crystal for peace. We look to Christ. We do not need to rely on a crystal to bring us power. We have the Holy Spirit. We do not need to look to a creation or what God has created. We need to look to the creator. Get rid of the crystals. People buy crystals because, oh, they're just pretty, but you don't know where they've been. 
unless you're getting your crystal source from a geologist and you know where they've been and you know who got them okay that's fine but if you don't know where your crystals have been who's done a, a ceremony over them who's prayed in a demonic way over them you should not have crystals in your home or on your jewelry they're very popular right now and the argument is god created them but god also created marijuana but he didn't say smoke it okay he created metal but he didn't say turn it into a knife and kill people so we can't use the god created as our way of saying it's okay to have crystals now again if you're getting them from a geologist that's one thing but if you're using them for new age practices you need to be very very careful crystals are beautiful god created them they're beautiful objects isn't it interesting it's one of the things the new age twists and perverts because god created them and they're alluring now rather than worship the god who created them we worship the creation and that's the problem with crystals we know revelation 21 the new jerusalem will be constructed from crystal so it's, it's a beautiful thing but you have to realize the majority of experts who promote healing crystals are involved in the occult and the occult means hidden okay occultism concerns itself with the study and utilization of supernatural influences powers and phenomenon that are normally hidden from physical senses and are generally considered to be outside of a scientific observation the occult works in the spiritual realm occultists believe that human beings and in the world which we live are are permeated by invisible magical energies and some of this is laughable i hate to say it but i'm just like a crystal like some of you i have anxiety i'm i'm not trying to make fun i know it sounds like i'm making fun but listen if you're rubbing a crystal to heal your anxiety you need to pray be anxious of nothing but instead pray about everything i some of you like, i need this crystal for for anxiety i need this crystal for money i need this and here's my thing is like you have all of these crystals and you still have no money and you still have anxiety and you're still stressed and you're still depressed and you're still suicidal and you're still bitter and you're still angry like are they really working for you why not go to the creator of the crystals instead of having to rub them or i got to balance my chakra i got to get clean energy i got to cleanse god's the one that cleanses god's the one that will balance your life god's the one that will heal you you don't need sacred stones or energies that are directed by sacred stones okay in addition to involvement with crystal power occultists suggest that other mystical practices such as astrology numerology divination tarot cards psychic healing mediumship spirit channeling eastern religions ritual magic and sorcery these are all involved in the same category of crystals these are all involved together now we know that god warned the children of israel against occult practices deuteronomy 18 9 through 12 when you enter the land your god is giving you do not imitate the detestable ways of the nations there let none be found among you that practice divination sorcery interpret omens engage in witchcraft cast spells medium spiritists or anyone that consults the dead all anyone who does these things is detestable to god this is what the bible says don't get mad at me they're detestable to god and using these sacred stones for mystical purposes was common among pagans in the bible what they would use now crystals are not new they were in the bible used for occult practices some people say well they're always beautiful in the bible and good no in the bible they were used and they were called amulets and they were magical charms small pendants worn around the neck or a bracelet just like they're worn today and they were worn to protect a person from negative energies evil spirits injury and bring good luck so these crystals were used in the bible time and God warns the people this in Ezekiel 13, 18. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to the woman, women who sew magic charms on their wrists and make veils lengths in their head to ensnare people. Will you ensnare the lives of my people but preserve your own? I'm against your magic charms. This isn't your Bible, folks, with which you ensnare people like birds. So you're using your magic charms to ensnare people and I'll tear them from your arms. I will set the people that you ensnare like birds. I will tear off your veils and I'll save my people from your hands and they will no longer fall prey to your power. The power of witchcraft was against the people of God. This was their target. And God says, I will remove your power. I will strip these amulets, these charms off of you. So do not get involved in amulets. Do not get involved in charms. Do not get involved in crystals. Even the devil works in signs and wonders according to 2 Thess Thessalonians 2. The Bible says the coming of the one of lawlessness will be in according with the work of Satan displayed with counterfeit miracles, signs and wonders, and every evil spirit and every evil sort 
under the command of Satan and his principalities, demonic spirits are going to manifest these signs. So the devil is going to use demonic spirits to manifest signs and wonders. And he's still doing that even right now. As I speak, he promises healing and wholeness. Stay away from crystals. You don't need crystals to heal you. You need God. You don't need a crystal to protect you. You need God. You don't need to worship creation. You need to worship creator. You don't need crystals to balance your vibrations. You need the Holy Spirit. So these crystals are a counterfeit. They are alluring you to worship them. I literally have, I don't know what it is, like a hair in my eye or something. These crystals are getting you to worship creation instead of creator. So crystals, no, get rid of them. All right, number three, get these out of your house. Now, angel cards, tarot cards, these are occult items. Tarot cards and angel cards are completely occult. Angel cards are becoming popular even in Christian circles right now. We even had some events where people are coming at my own church and doing tarot card and angel card readings. One guy's like, how dare you tell me I can't do angel card readings? I'm like, brother, you're in my parking lot of my church. We had two groups when I first started preaching at my local church. Two different groups come and giving out angel cards in the parking lot. Just because they're called angel cards doesn't mean they're okay. They are demonic. Now, the history of tarot is debated between historians and practicing psychics. This is what some source says. Still, it seems that it's created as a card game back in the 14th century and slowly evolved into a divination tool. Two famous French occultists, John Elliot, John Baptiste Elliot, and Antoine Court, are typically credited for popularizing tarot card readings back in Paris in the 1800s. Tarot card readers have become more specialized since they're commonly used today for psychic readings and spiritual growth. Most work exclusively with tarot, but many have branched out into oracle cards and angel cards. And this is one of the reasons why the church is embracing them is because now we're saying, oh, they're angel cards. They're going to give you your destiny. They're no big deal. The first tarot card deck we know for certain was designed for occult purposes was created in 1789. And these had 78 cards divided into two arcanas, two different categories. And these cards are emperor, empress, high priest, magician, uh, hero faint, the hermit, temperance, the tower, the chariot, the strength, the justice, the lovers, the moon, the star, the sun, the world, the will of fortune, the hangman, the devil, death, the fool, and judgment. These are the first set of cards. Does any of that sound Christian to you? Does any of that sound godly to you? The second set was the minor arc arcana, which was the king, the queen, the knight, the page, the cups, the rods, the sword, the pentacles. One or more of the popular decks were created by Alistair Crawley, who is a complete occultist. Complete occultist, one of the worst out there, and is known by the Thoth deck drawing in Egyptian symbolism. And a lot of this ties into Egyptian symbolism, Egyptian gods they get their inspiration from. These are nothing to mess with. Again, I want to remind you, they open you up to demons. I'm going to keep saying it because we're live, so people are coming in and out. There's 3,000 of you watching right now. They open you up to demons. The main use of tarot cards is for divination purposes. New Age conferences and even local town festivals frequently feature tarot card reading for a fee. So they'll give you insight on your love life, your finances, family problems, potential spouse, or any other questions you might ask. They're going to pull the cards and they're going to use demonic powers to try to read your future. And I want to remind you, the demons are using the cards. The demons are using the cards. Okay. Again, each tarot card reader has their own personal method for practicing this divination from setting down a predetermined number of cards or intuitively approaching the cards or this is their, I'm getting this from their site, from their source. They'll use their spirit guides or the cosmos will tell them how to read you. So some of them will use random numbers, predetermined cards, specific deck patterns. Others will let the stars tell them what to pick the cosmos, which is demonic. Astrology is demonic. Go check out Angela's video she just did on her channel shout out to Angela or spirit guides which the, the article is not Christian it's not going to tell us demons but spirit guides are demonic okay angel cards can either come in the format of tarot cards or oracle cards in most angel card decks each card has a specific me me uh, message when used in tarot they will make a particular message plus the original meaning of the tarot card along with it creating a complex reader experience so basically if you're a nerd Angel cards are the DLC to tarot cards. They're the add-on to tarot cards. They give an increased meaning or a more of a meaning. Angel cards focus to provide gentle guidance from non-physical entities. Let me say that again. If you didn't catch that. Angel cards focus to provide gentle guidance from non-physical entities. <laughs> what is that? That's a demon. Ephesians 6, we battle not against flesh and blood, but persons without bodies. 
The Bible literally describes demons as non-physical entities, which is what the New Agers call them, but they're demons, especially from the angelic realm, which is in, d demons are fallen angels. So demons would be considered angelic. Not all angel cards are about angels, though. Decks include ascended masters, fairies, goddesses, and any grouping considered spiritually evolved on the same level as angels. They can come packaged as oral, oracle decks, tarot decks, or combination of both. They're straightforward and they're to use or complicated depending on the format that you're using. These are divina divination tools that, tools that channel demons. Leviticus 19.31, look at what it says. Give no regard to mediums or familiar spirits. Do not seek after mediums. Do not let them defile you. I'm the Lord your God. Very important. He says, I'm the Lord your God. Almighty God is reminding his people that he is the Lord and stay away from these. Don't go to mediums, he says. Don't go to familiar spirits. Don't seek after them. Don't be defiled by them. And if you do, God will cut you off. If you go to them, God says, I will cut you off. Galatians 5.19 outlines the work of the flesh and sorcery is included in that list. Paul says, those who practice these will not inherit the kingdom of God. Isaiah, how important is it what we're talking about tonight? How important is it that my friends and family know about this? Those who indulge in sorcery, which is everything we're talking about tonight, will not inherit the kingdom of God. So my thing to you is this. You don't need a card to tell your future. You need to go to God. God will unveil your future. You don't need a tarot card. The Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. So God has it all planned out. Stop stressing. God has the plan. You don't need some card with a demon on it or shackles on it. Tarot cards are an open door for demons in you and in your home. If you have tarot cards, get rid of them yesterday. Get rid of them yesterday. Uh, you should not still have them. All right, next is Ouija boards. Excuse me, one second. All right, if you guys like my little graphic, I did that because Mike Signorelli did it on his video that was like this, and he got a lot of views. So we're going to add the little graphics tonight to keep you occupied. The Ouija board, also known, I'm getting this info from Wikipedia, as a spirit board, talking board, or a witch board. And I want you to note, when I'm getting doing my research, I'm not looking at Christian websites. I'm looking directly from the source of what these things are all about, because I'm not just giving you, here's the Christian perspective. I'm telling you their perspective, and then I'm giving you a Christian perspective on why they're demonic, okay? They're talking boards or witch boards. It's a flat board marked with letters of the Latin alphabet and the number zero to nine, the word yes, the word no, and occasionally hello and goodbye, along with various other symbols and graphics. It uses a planchette, which is a small heart-shaped piece of wood or plastic as a movable indicator to spell out messages during a seance. Okay, this is Wikipedia. I don't know, it's not that big of a deal. They, they're used during a seance. The name Ouija is a trademark of, listen to this, Hasbro, inherited from Parker Brothers, but is often generically to refer to any talking board. Did you guys just hear what I just said? Hasbro owns the trademark to the name Ouija. Wait, the same Hasbro that makes all of these kids' toys, all of these kid boards, and they we think it's innocent because it's made by Hasbro. Yes, are you catching it? As Begonia would say, did you catch it? The same child games, Mr. Potato Head, everything we loved and grew up with has trademarked the word Ouija and they're selling this at Target. You can get this at Target. I mean, you can go to the all gender bathroom and then go get a Ouija board at Target. Target is, what is going on at Target? I don't even know. The devil's just playing with, playing there. Okay, so you can buy this at Walmart or Target and it's an open door to speak to demons. Spiritualists in the United States believe the dead are able to contact and spiritualists in the united states believe that the dead were able to contact the living and reportedly use talking boards to a modern ouija board at their camps in ohio in 1886 for faster communication with spirits following its commercial patent by businessman elijah bond on 1890 the ouija board was regarded as an innocent parlor game and is considered to be unrelated to the occult until american spiritualist and professional chess master Pearl Curran popularized it as a divining tool during World War I. Okay, so it was used to channel spirits. A businessman got a hold of it, made the patent, said it's just a fun parlor, innocent game. Have it, you know, add a sleepover, invite demons in, no big deal. And then Pearl Curran popularized it as a divining tool in World War I. And sorry, some of these names are old in the 1800s. I can't even say half of them and it's hard to pronounce them. Now it became back again a divining tool, which we know it's been a divining tool ever since. One of the first mentions of automatic writing was used 
uh, used in the Ouija board is found in China around 1100 AD in historical documents of the Song Dynasty. The message was known as Fuji Planchette Writing. The use of a planchette writing is an ostensible means of necromancy and communing with the spirit world, albeit under special rituals and supervisions. It was central for Quanzhen school and it was forbidden by the Xing dynasty. So this was happening in China. The earliest mention of the Ouija board, the planchette in automatic writing was 1100 AD. This is not new. The devil doesn't have new tricks. The devil's using all these things to communicate with you. So Ouija boards, what are they used for? According to their website, to contact the dead, aka familiar spirits, aka demons. Now, when you are using a Ouija board, and grandma, give me the recipe to that famous apple pie that I loved, and it puts you onto that recipe. Friend, that's not grandma's apple pie recipe. That's a demon who knew your grandma. It's called a familiar spirit. How did they know so much about me? Uh, because the demons are there with you all the time. It's like, oh, the demon knew I was at that party. Yeah, the demon was with you at the party. Why are we shocked that familiar spirits know about you? They follow you. They're around you. They're in you. They're familiar with you. So no, it's not Grandma Betty talking you through the Ouija board. It's a familiar spirit trying to deceive you so it can get into you. In fact, one of my childhood best friends, we got saved together. He had, he played Ouija board one time. If this doesn't scare you, I don't know what will. And he left the person's house where he played Ouija board. And I kid you not, this is his story. He was my childhood best friend. A little boy followed him for two years a little boy would appear to him of course it was an evil spirit after playing Ouija board for two years and the, apparently the little boy would tell him about how the little boy was in the war and all of these crazy stories this little demon boy literally a familiar spirit of a little boy for two years followed him got saved I got saved he got saved and he got delivered from that little boy that spirit that came in how did the spirit come in the Ouija board. Ladies and gentlemen, this is dangerous. Do not play the Ouija board. And now they also have what you see on screen, the Holy Spirit board. This was supposed to be a gag gift or a hoax, but people are really using this to try to contact the Holy Spirit when they're not contacting the Holy Spirit, they're contacting demonic spirits. I won't even go into that, the Holy Spirit board. I think I did a reaction to it on one of my shorts. Isaiah 8, 19. When men tell you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? That's Isaiah 8, 19. God says, why, why are you not just consulting me? Why are you consulting the dead? The dead know nothing. Do not consult the dead. So that Holy Spirit board game is now selling on Amazon. You can go, you can go see it there. Completely demonic. It's used to talk to God when in reality, it's just another vehicle the devil's using. Okay, physical items the devil interacts with. So what are some of the rules of the Ouija board? I'm going to give you these directly off of their website. This is not me making these up. I have these written down. I'm going to give you four. There's like 15, but for the sake of time, we're already 40 minutes in and we still have six more things to talk about. Uh, help me, Lord. So number one rule of the Ouija board is never mention God. And they say, if you mention God, you'll upset the spirits. Ding, ding, ding. If something says don't mention God, get it out of your house. If you still think it's innocent, I hope I'm building a good case that it's not innocent. Number two, never use the Ouija board in your home. And this is what the article says. Never use the Ouija board or a spirit board in your house. You should find an area that is brimming with positive energy. The ideal place should be quiet, a uh, dark and quiet to not scare the spirits and to make them comfortable. So they say, make sure you're in the dark, be very quiet. Apparently, 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 okay, apparently demons don't like loud, which <laughs> now I'm starting to get why demons don't like me, but demons don't like loud. They want you to be nice and quiet. You know, you got to whisper, talk low. So they say, be dark in a dark place, be in a quiet place to make the spirits comfortable. Some of y'all, listen, <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh here. You already make the spirits comfortable. Let's just be honest. Your life makes them comfortable. And then they say, it can be very difficult to identify what kind of spirit you've connected with. And if you're in your home, you don't want to put those who live with you in danger. Let me read that one more time from a demonic new age website. It can be very difficult to identify what spirits you've connected with. And if you're in your home, you don't want to put the people there in danger. Guys, this is a new age website saying, don't put your family in danger by playing this at home. If some of you in the chat are still like, ah, I like my Ouija board, I'll, I'll keep it. And then they say this, if by small chance, you end up speaking to a malicious entity, aka a demon. It can easily attach to you with its dark energy and attach to your home. 
Malicious spirits like to anchor themselves in the living world and specific locations, and they enjoy living in people's homes. Remind you, this is a New Age website. Then they say, pro tip, don't use the board in a graveyard. That's asking for trouble because there's hundreds of spirits at the graveyard and it's hard to talk to one because all of them will be trying to butt in. Number three, never burn your Ouija board. Many become scared of the board because they interact with an evil, malicious spirit, they say. However, if you want to destroy the board, this is number three rule, you shouldn't burn it. Whatever you do, do not burn the board. You can trap the spirits and make them angry. The best thing to do is store it away. What did they do in the book of Acts? Acts 19.19. 19. They burned it. So the New Age website says, don't burn the board. Don't burn it. The Bible in Acts 19 says burn it. I remember growing up, I had one interaction with the Ouija board. Well, two. The first one was, we had a friend that had like a um, manufactured home on his property. I was trying to think of the word for it. And his grandma lived there or one of his relatives lived there and she ended up moving out and they were going to rent it out. So we had to go in and clean it. And in one of the closets up at the very top, we found a Ouija board. And we we're like freaking out, screaming, get rid of it, get rid of it. I, this is what he told me. I was, I was young at the time. I was maybe 13 or 14. I watched him. Okay, he lived down the street from me. Throw the Ouija board in the dumpster because we were cleaning out the whole thing. So they rented a dumpster, blah, blah, blah. I watched him throw the Ouija board in the dumpster. We were all freaking out. Get rid of it. It's demonic. Get rid of it. The next morning, when I, when I ended up talking to him, he was freaking out saying that Ouija board ended up on his front porch. Okay, now, was one of his family members playing a trick? I have no clue. Maybe someone was in the dumpster, decided not to throw it away and put it on his front porch. I have no clue. He just told me it was on my front door when I got home and freaked out and told his parents and blah, 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 blah. I was there when he threw it in the dumpster. How did he get back on his front porch? I don't know. Probably a demon brought it back to his front porch. Another encounter I had was at a friend's house. They were about to play. I left. I'm like, I'm not touching that. I don't want nothing involved in that. I'm not trying to get no demons from none of that. But D Ouija boards will open you up to demons. So they say don't burn the board. Acts 19, what did they do? They burned the board, okay? Number four, this is the rules. There's like 10, but I'm only gonna give you four because I don't have time to talk all night about Ouija boards. It is always say goodbye to the spirits or the spirits will haunt you. Duh, the spirits will haunt you. How about this? I'm gonna add rule number five. Don't play Ouija board. Don't play Ouija board. So do not be involved. Ouija boards are demonic. Okay, number five is dream catchers. We were at an Airbnb last year. And there was dream catchers all over the place. And I was like, oh, whatever. They were super high up, so I couldn't get to them. It was like a big cabin. A bunch of our family was there. In our room, there was a dream catcher super high up in our cab, in our room me and my wife were in. And I couldn't get to it. There was no ladder there. I'm like, I can't get to that dream catcher. Whatever. It's an Airbnb. I'm not going to start taking down decorations. I'm just going to go to sleep. Have the worst dreams. Worst sleep. I, I would say literally of my entire life. Worst sleep. Worst dreams ever. Next day, I... I same thing, worst dreams. By the third day, I was like, oh, maybe it's because there's a dream catcher above my bed. So I ended up finding a thing, smacked, well, built a big broom thing, taped to another thing, got the dream catcher down on the next three or four days, two or three days, whatever it was, slept like a baby. Dream catchers are demonic. Now, let me give you just a little definition about dream catchers, and then I'll tell you what they mean, because this is the one that's going to be a lot of backlash. Actually, the next one's gonna get me more backlash and make you more mad than you probably already are. But people say, oh brother, you're racist to the Native American people and blah. No, no. There's a lot of witchcraft in, in the Native American world. There's a lot of witchcraft in these tribes and the things that they make. And this specifically, right here on my screen, is 100% a, a demonic tool. So this is what they say about dream catchers. For many cultures, spiders are dreaded as frightening insects. For the uh, Ajabui, I hope I said that right, probably not. The Ajabui tribe, however, they were actually a symbol of protection. An old Abajui legend says that there was an origin of the world. At the origin of the world, a mystical woman who was nicknamed the Spider Woman provided spiritual protection for the tribe, especially for the young children, the babies, and the newborns. The Ajabui tribe kept growing and expanding year after year. It became difficult for the Spider Woman to continue to protect them because the tribe was getting so big and they were migrating to distant lands. She then came up with the idea of creating the Native American dream catcher. Following his example, mothers and grandmothers in turn recreated it to protect their children from a distance. So it started with what? The spider woman, a mystical woman that's been there since the origins of the world. The tribe got so big, she could no longer protect, protect the tribe. So they made a bunch of little versions of her to protect the tribe from evil spirits and other things. The beautiful dreams then pass through the threads and slide down the feathers to reach the sleeper and comfort them. 
Bad dreams are trapped in the web, destroyed and burned by daylight. The interpretations of dreams has strongly influenced cultural and spiritual beliefs of Native Americans for centuries. They believe that dreams had an influence on the conscious soul of the dreamer. According to them, dreams have an impact on character traits such as maturity, kindness, and loyalty. The canvas is responsible for catching bad dreams and catching evil spirits. Here we go again. More evil spirits and spiritual talk. During the night, they get rid of evil spirits when the day comes. Feathers allow for dreams to be caught. Okay, we already talked about that. They were attached above the cradles of newborns and the headboards of children's beds. Over the years, they believed to be catching evil spirits and bad dreams. And again, there's a lot of witchcraft involved in Native American artifacts. Be very careful if you have Native American artifacts because witchcraft runs rampant through some of these tribes. All right, then they talk about how they're considered charms or talismans. They protect you from bad energy. Remember, the Bible says do not have anything to do with charms or talismans or amulets. Um, they're protecting against evil influences. The web is part, it does the heavy lifting. It represents a spider's web and it's, uh, it traps basically unwanted things with a circle in the middle. The beads are woven in the design. Oh, we already talked about the beads, the feathers. We talked about that. The number of web points. Okay, the number of web points hold symbolism. Nothing is random when designing a dream catcher. If your dream catcher has five points, it represents a star. If it has six points, it represents eagle and courage. Seven points, homage to the seven prophecies, which who even knows what that is, probably something demonic. Eight points, honor the spider woman, a sacred figure for the Ojibwe tribe. 13 points, the 13 phases of the moon. All new age, I'm sorry, all occultish, all demonic, okay? So they say again, hang it above your bed. It'll catch evil spirits. It'll catch dreams and all this type of stuff. And it'll catch bad energies. Here's the weird part. What you're going to see later when we talk about sage is it doesn't get rid of demons. It invites demons. So no, 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 no dream catchers. All right, here's where we're going to stir up some trouble here. Number six, religious statues in your home. Statues of Jesus. Statues of Mary. Statues of Buddha. Statues of Hindu gods, statues of Roman or Greek gods, any other god, statue, figure, even Mary, who praised God for Mary. Praise God for Mary. We don't praise Mary. We don't pray to Mary. The Bible teaches there is one mediator between man and God. That's the man Christ Jesus. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer you Catholics in the chat. Well, brother, we're not praising her. We're just venerating her. We're not worshiping her. We're venerating her. I'm going to show you that veneration is worship here in a second. The second commandment of the Ten Commandments is do not make an idol or worship or serve them. Exodus 24 through 6. You shall not make yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth, beneath or the water or under the earth. You shall not worship them. You shall not serve them. I am the Lord your God. I'm a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children of the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing kindness to a thousand generations. That's Exodus 20, verse 4. No idols, don't worship them of no likeness, don't praise them. It also appears in Deut Deuteronomy 4, 15, verse 23, chapter 5, verse 7, chapter 27, verse 15. The common theme is this, don't worship idols, don't praise idols, and God prohibits us from making them. In fact, in the book of Acts, Revival broke out and put the idol makers out of business. They put the idol makers out of business. Now, I know there's Catholics in the chat. Let me talk to you here in a second. Just stay with me. So we don't make idols. We don't worship idols. Deuteronomy 4, don't make them, don't worship them. The Hebrew word for idol is pasel, which is translated a graven image or an image of something. It can be made from clay, wood, stone, silver, gold, or metal. That is an idol or an image from anything. The basic meaning of an idol or image refers to an object on a table, a wall, a shelf, a fireplace, a mantle, a niche in a wall. This is what the Bible is describing. These idols and these Hindu idols are worshipped. They're prayed to. They give sacrifice to them. They pour milk on them. I don't even want to go into all the detail. They offer up sacrifices to these idols. Okay, so, the, so we want to make sure that we're not worshipping idols. Leviticus 19.4. Do not turn to idols or make yourself molten gods. I'm the Lord your God. All right, Leviticus 26, 1. You shall not make yourselves any idols, nor set up any images or sacred pillar, nor shall you place a figured stone in your land or bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. And I digress. There's scripture after scripture after scripture. Now, let's get into what you guys are going to keep saying. We don't worship them, brother. We don't worship. We just venerate Mary. We just venerate the saints. We just, we're not praying to them. We're asking them for prayers. I'm not going to talk about praying to Mary and the saints. The Bible clearly prohibits it. 
I already did a video on that, which made a lot of you mad. It's okay. I'm just giving you what the Bible says. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at the Bible. Here's what we need to understand. If those of you in the chat that say, it's just a statue, I'm just venerating it, okay? I'm, I'm not venerating it. I'm not worshiping it or not praising it. It's just veneration to Mary. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary definition of veneration is to give reverential, reverential, I can't even say that word, reverential, reverential, reverence, reverential respect. Now, the definition of worship is showing reverence to a divine being, okay? So veneration is showing reverential respect. Worship is showing reverence to a divine being. They're almost the same thing. Notice that reverence is, the com is common in both definitions. So when you're venerating Mary or reverencing Mary, it's the same definition as worship. You're still worshiping. You're asking her for prayers. You're still submitting yourself to her. And the Roman Catholic Church wants us to believe that they don't give the same reverence to Mary as they do to God. So in order to avoid the word worship, they call it veneration. Someone said this, the simplest definition of worship is to describe worth to something. Worship can be more completely defined as showing respect, showing love, reverence, or adoration for something. Based on the dictionary, there is no difference between veneration and worship. This is what the person said. There's no difference between veneration and between worship. When Roman Catholics pray to Mary, they're treating her as if she were God. Okay, because you're worship, you're venerating her. Throughout the Bible, prayer is only to be directed to God himself and no one else. You got to remember, we are never to pray to idol. Our prayer should only be offered to God and not to Mary. And without realizing it, many Roman Catholics are treating Mary as if she were God. This is contrary to the second commandment. So get rid of, out of your house, Buddha statues, Hindu statues, Mary statues. I would even say Jesus statues. You don't need a statue of Jesus. He lives in you. Not only that, you don't even know what he looks like. So especially if Jesus is on a cross, listen, I know some of you are new. I'm trying to be nice. I'm, I know I'm very brash and I'm very like black and white, okay? If you have a necklace with Jesus on the cross, get rid of it. If you have a picture of Jesus on the cross, get rid of it. If you have a statue with Jesus on the cross, get rid of it. Why? Because he's not on the cross anymore. I'm still on the fence whether having a cross necklace or picture whatever is I don't know. I don't know. But if he's on the cross, get rid of it. Remember, the cross was a Roman torture device. It was a Roman. Now, I know what it means. It represents what he did on the cross. He's not there anymore. He's off the cross. So, again, I'm mixed. I'm not going to jump out of the window and say every cross, don't have any crosses. I just personally, like cross necklace, I'm like, uh, it's a Roman torture device around my neck. Feels a little bit weird to me sometimes. But 100%, if he's on the cross, get rid of it. That's Roman Catholic jewelry, and he's not on the cross anymore. Why would you put Jesus back on the cross? I don't understand that. Why would you want a picture of your house of Jesus on the cross if he's not there? And the, and the Catholics in the chat, you agree he's not there, right? Come on, someone help me. That's Catholic in the chat. You agree he's not there, so do, do him a favor and get rid of it. All right, number seven. We'll try to go quick here. Demonic. Now, I was going to put images for this, you know, my little cute slideshow here, but... I don't want to put demonic movie uh, covers on my stream. So they're scary. They're creepy. Kids are watching. I'm just going to say this. And Angela said, I had a statue of Jesus sitting as a Buddha meditation when I first got saved and didn't know any better. I had to toss that. Yes. Yes. Get rid of the Buddha. Get rid of the Jesus as a Buddha. The hybrid Jesus mixed with Buddha mixed with Mary. Throw all of it out. The crucifix, the rosary. None of that is in the Bible. Okay. Number seven uh, is demonic movies, music, or video games. Now, I don't have time. I'm an hour in to go over, is this demonic? Is this demonic? Is this demonic? You need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Horror movies are demonic. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Okay, I can't tell you every single thing, but horror movies open you up to demons. They open you up to a spirit of fear, which the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. The devil uses entertainment to, would you guess it? Enter you. So yes, I have cast out many demons, that came in through horror movies. Some of you have watched a horror movie and you felt something come through the screen. I used to love horror movies. Horror movies were my favorite genre before I was saved. But praise the Lord, when I got saved, I got delivered from that spirit that likes violence and gore and death and torture and every other putrid, vile, demonic, nefarious thing that horror movies portray. Horror movies are no, and they're antithetical to the, to the gospel. They're antithetical to what Christ teaches and to joy and peace and love and hope. Trust me, 
Get rid of the horror movies. If you ever watch one, I remember in the world watching horror movies and being like, oh, it feels like something's in the room with me. It's like, oh yeah, it was my girlfriend and then someone else next to me, a demon. I felt that many times watching horror movies, but I just thought, oh, it just makes me feel good. But no, it was demons, 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 demons. This opens you up to them. Five letters, enter. Enter is the word, okay? Entertainment. There's a reason why they call TV programming. Literally, as you're watching the horror movies, it's programming you. The television wants to change your vision. Okay, we're not going to all that. Let's ask ourselves this, because I can't go into all of these different types of movies and is this bad, is this bad, what about this, what about this, what about this, what about this? Let's ask ourselves this with movies, because I'm trying to figure out how do I do this without and make it make sense. Movies, music, and video games. Let's ask ourselves this. Philippians 4.8. Let's put it through the Philippians 4.8 test. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worth praise, think about these things. Does horror movies match that? Are horror movies honorable? Are they commendable? Are they excellent? Is there anything worthy of praise? Are they lovely? Are they pure? No, 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 no. A thousand times no. Okay, is the music I listen to commendable, excellent, worthy of praise, pure, lovely, just, honorable? No. Are the video games I play commendable, excellent, pure, lovely, honorable? Okay, so I have to put them through that filter and say, no. No. So what does Romans 12, 1 say? Therefore, I urge you, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Here's why a lot of you have no conviction watching horror movies, playing horror games, listening to horror music, whatever. Horror, horror, or horror music. All right, this is why. You've never given your body to God. So you actually believe your body belongs to you. Romans 12 says, give your body to God. Body, hands, arms, feet. So people say, why don't you watch that, brother? I can't watch it. I can't watch it because my body doesn't belong to me. It's not my eyes. These aren't my eyes. I can't just say you're watching porn. Like, oh, I'm just going to watch some porn and have fun. No, no. My eyes don't belong to me. And if God doesn't want to watch it, I'm not watching it. And sorry to tell you, God doesn't want to watch the new exorcism movie or the new Saw movie or the new whatever demonic, ungodly movie your church is meeting up to go watch. I was at an old church I used to be at years and years and years ago. They used to go watch the Twilight movies as a church. Hey, we're going to meet up and go watch a movie about vampires biting each other. No wonder there's no deliverance happening in that church. My body belongs to God. I can't do what I want to do. Oh, I really like the beat, but my ears belong to God. And eh, Jesus ain't trying to listen to all that garbage. I really want to play the game. But my eyes, my hands belong to God, and I don't think Jesus wants to do that. So no, I can't do it. I can't. Look what 1 Thessalonians 2.12 says. We exhorted each one of you, encouraged you, and you, and charged you, charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God who calls you in his own kingdom and glory. Am I walking in a manner that is worthy of God watching these horror movies, listening to horror music, or horror music, or horror video games? 1 Corinthians 10 31, whether you eat or drink, do it to the glory of God. Can you watch a horror movie to the glory of God? No, no. Just be honest. You're obsessed with death. Be honest. You're obsessed with blood and gore and violence and shocking images. Just be honest. You like dirty music. You like it. It makes, it makes your demons feel good. Be honest. You like the demonic games. Just don't lie about it. Like, oh, it's no big deal. Don't defend it. Just keep watching it and be honest that you love it. You love it because you need to get delivered. You need some conviction in your life. So the question is this. How is it you're entertained by the very sins that Christ died for? How is that possible? Look at what 2 Corinthians 13, 13 5 says. Examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Test yourselves. This is what I want to show you right here. This is 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. So it's like, do we not realize when we're out doing demonic things, watching movies, listening to uh, secular music, playing these games, going out, partying, drinking, fill in the blank. Paul's like, examine yourself. Are you even in the faith? Do you not even realize 
Christ is in you? Like, don't you realize Christ is in you? So yes, I've cast out demons that came in through movies and video games. I have not met a demon yet that came in through music, but I'm sure there's plenty out there. So get, get away from these. Okay, number eight, soul tie items. Basically, any item that ties you in an unhealthy way to another person. Remember what 1 Corinthians 6, 16 says, do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is written, the two shall become one. So you can join yourself to someone through sexual intimacy. Get rid of the items. I don't have time to do a whole teaching. I was going to, but I'm already over an hour and I don't want to make a three hour video because then no one will watch it. And I'll make sure I do chapters and timestamps for all of your friends and family that only watch a minute. I'll do timestamps through this whole video so you can skip to the parts you want. Get rid of soul tie items, t-shirts, music, whatever. If you have an ungodly soul tie with somebody and you've broken that soul tie, you need to get rid of that item, okay? How do I know if I have a soul tie with an ex-boyfriend, uh, ex-girlfriend, ex-spouse, whatever? A couple ways. You visualize them when you're with someone else. You left their relationship, but you obsess over them and think about them constantly. You're being abused physically, spiritually, or verbally, but you feel too attached to break things off of them. You defend them when friends and family point out the harm they do to you. You take on the traits that they have. Why? Because your soul is tied to them through things I can't mention. You constantly dream or fantasize about them or you feel like you can't move on with your life. It's been years. You broke up four years ago. You still talk about them, think about them. They hinder you. You, you bring in their baggage to new relationships. You probably have a soul tie. You might have a soul tie. Go watch my video on that. Get rid of the items, whatever it is they have. I could go on a huge list. I won't. Get rid of them because I, I have more stuff to cover. Number nine. I added incense in this. But number nine is burning sage and incense. Let me just make this clear. Burning sage does not rid your house of demons. Burning sage invites demons in. This is what an article, secular article from Healthline said. Burning sage has long been used to connect you to the spiritual realm or enhance intuition. For healers and lay people in traditional cultures, burning sage achieves a healing stage, stage or solves spiritual dilemmas. Burning sage can also be used to rid yourself of negative energy, negative spirits, past trauma, bad experiences, or bad energy from others. It can help you establish a positive environment for meditation or other rituals. Burning sage creates a fragrant smoke, which you can use to cleanse yourself. According to some sources, you could even use it to cleanse your house or to cleanse objects. This can be useful when you get new purchases, gifts, secondhand items. However you want to cleanse that item, you can use sage, which this is all baloney. I'm going to tell you why. If you have any concern about negative energies or histories or unfamiliar things, just burn sage. Tradition, tradition suggests that burning sage can literally lift one's spirit to banish negativity. Some research has even supported this. It could solve depression, anxiety. This is a joke. But anyways, mood disorders and other things. What does burning sage do? A Chinese medicine practitioner with over 20 years said burning sage, also known as smudging, is a century, uh, centuries-old ancient ritual used to purify and heal sacred spaces from unclean energies. It dispels negativity, promotes healing, enhances allergies, or energies. I was going to say, why would you want to enhance your allergies? Enhances energies and instills wisdom by connecting you. This is what the Chinese person, Chinese medicine practitioner of 20 years says. By connecting you to higher realms. To higher realms. It is said to dispel negativity. Oh, I already said that. Its modern appeal is widely for self-care to purge yourself of bad energy, purge your space, purge your house, bad energy, trauma, bad experiences. In addition, it could bring relaxation, focus, and combat stress, frustrations, anxiety. No, no, no. I'll tell you what it does. It, it's basically like when you're really hungry and you smell like a tri-tip or steak or your favorite meal and it's like, ooh, where's that coming from? That's what sage is for demons. Sage does not cleanse you of demons. It attracts demons to you. It's a new age ritualistic type thing that invokes demons. So if you're trying to like shoot off a flare to get demons to notice you, just go ahead and start burning sage around and invite demons into your home. That's what sage does. I'm going to add incense because I don't know. I'm on the fence with incense. I did some research on this. I just find it sus that incense are used in a lot of ritual practices but let me just read a little bit about incense, incense to you. Not incest, incense. So YouTube, don't demonetize me. Why are you doing that? You keep demonetizing all my videos. Incense, okay? 
The act of burning incense is an important ritual since ancient times, believed to originate in Egypt of the Old Kingdom. It was used by priests to fumigate tombs, has a long history in ceremonies, rituals, spiritual, and religious occasions. Incense burning was discovered in India as early as 3300 BC, used alongside worship and prayer. It was used to burn and ward off evil spirits while purifying the surroundings. Again, I had no problem with incense until I started researching in this last week, and I was like, uh, it's a little bit sus, I don't know. I'm a little bit, it's a little sus to me. Over 2,000 years ago, the trade of spices and incense ugh, incense, played a significant economic role between the East and the West. In those days, Middle Eastern incense routes uh, wound its way through the Middle East and Mediterranean region, where it was popularized by the Roman Empire. It's been estimated that 3,000 tons of incense traveled around the world each year. Today, burning incense is synonymous with practicing diverse religions, including Catholicism, Buddhism, Hinduism, and it even goes beyond spiritual as is now commonly used in yoga studios, wellness offices, and even in people's homes. I don't know. Before today, I would have been like, I don't really know about incense much. I don't really, but now it seems to be that they're used by new agers, used by yoga studios, Buddhists, Hindus, Catholics. So I personally wouldn't burn them in my home. I would use your own discretion and figure it out yourself. But I would say I would personally stay away from it. I would personally stay away from it. Okay, number 10 has no image for obvious reasons. Number 10 is pornography, okay? Now, pornography usually is not uh, a physical item any longer. Like when I was younger, it's now on your phone. But I just want to make something very clear. If you're watching pornography on your co home computer, on your phone, you're opening up your home to demonic spirits. I've told you guys a story before of a guy had a young daughter that was making crazy sexual references towards older adult friends. And he went to a pastor and said, my young daughter is saying the weirdest sexual thing. She doesn't even know what she's saying to my older friends. And this is crazy. I don't know why she's saying this. One day she just started saying some crazy sexual things. The pastor said, it's because you're watching internet pornography and internet pornography is opening the door to demons in your home. Those demons are coming out of the screen and jumping onto your daughter. He ended up going through deliverance and his daughter never dealt with it ever since. My point is this, if you're watching pornography, you're opening up your house, you're opening up your Matthew 12, your house to demonic spirits. It's a very serious thing. It's a very serious thing. It'll open up just a complete infestation of demons. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral will inherit the kingdom of God. So I want you to notice, this is a major thing. Your life is on the line. Your eternity is on the line. Like, this is no game. The sexually immoral will not inherit the kingdom of God. Romans 2.16, and this message I proclaim that the day is coming when Jesus Christ will judge everyone's secret life. It's only a secret right now. There's no such thing as permanent secrets. It's only a secret right now. One day God will judge the secrets of every man. So I want you to repeat this after me, okay? We're going to pray a prayer, and we're going to command all of these demons to leave our home. Now I would challenge you, Pray over your home, command demons to leave, let the devil know he has no place in your home. We're going to invite the Holy Spirit and make sure these demons have no place. So I want you to repeat this up to me. In the name of Jesus, I speak now to every demon in my home. I do not care what gave you a right to be here. This is the dwelling place of God. And I want you to say this out loud. This is an earthly headquarters for God's kingdom. And you have no right to be here. All the people in my home are given to God and dedicated to him. I revoke your legal rights to be here. Say that out loud. I revoke your legal rights to be here. I command every demon to go and never return in Jesus' name. Say that again. I command every demon to go and never return in Jesus' name. And now I want you to say, Lord, forgive me of all my sins and the sins of, sin of my family. Any spirit associated or passed down through my bloodline, I command to go now in Jesus' name. I command every spirit in my house, leave now in Jesus' name. Okay, I want you to say this. We now dedicate this place to the Lord. Holy Spirit, come into our home. Take control of our home and rule over this house in Jesus' name.
All right, let me pray for you. Father, I pray right now over every single home, Lord, that you would rid of every unclean, cursed object, cursed item, demonic thing. I pray, Lord, rid them of our home, God. Movies, music, video games, Ouija boards, tarot cards, fortune-telling items, soul tie items, pornography, accursed items. Lord, if there's anything you've told us to get rid of, I pray, Lord, we'd obey you right now. We'd obey you right now. And I'll answer your guys' questions after. Let's pray here real quick. Father, I pray right now, show us what you want us to get rid of. Lord, show us what you want us to get rid of right now. And let the, and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Whatever that is he wants you to get rid of, just let him speak to you. He'll tell you right now, what is it, Lord, you want us to get rid of? We'll get rid of it. Come on, alcohol, drugs, vape, get rid of it. Cigarettes, get rid of it. Statues in your home, just get rid of them. Buddha, Hindu, Mary statues, Jesus statues, whatever idols, little idols you made in your home, just get rid of them. Don't even, don't even risk it. Don't even play with it. Dream catchers, out of your car, evil eye bracelets, crystal bracelets, crystal rings, whatever it is that's attached to that new age, allowing these demons in. Lord, we pray you just speak to us clearly. Speak to us clearly, God. Whatever it is, God, we just command it to leave now. You have no power, Satan. You must go now. Just tell him to leave your house right now in Jesus' name. Satan, you have no power. Leave our house. Leave our kids. You have no authority. The Lord rebukes you, Satan. Up and out in Jesus' name. Up and out in Jesus' name. Every spirit must go. We don't want you. You have no legal right. The Lord rebukes you. You have no legal right. Every spirit must go right now in Jesus' name. We dedicate our home to you, Lord. Fill our house with your Holy Spirit. Lord, fill our house with your Holy Spirit. I pray right now. Yeah, if you have Islamic books, get rid of them. Books attached to Mormonism, get rid of them. All of these false religions, get rid of the books. Wicca books, get rid of them. Book of Mormon, get rid of it. All of these things give demons legal right to be in your house. I don't have time to be all political, correct? Well, you know, no, get rid of all of it. It's demonic, go burn it. Go burn it. Everything right now. Everything I mentioned, get rid of it. No more burning sage. No more incense. Come on, get rid of them now. No more soul tie items. No more demonic movies. No more demonic music. No more demonic video games. No more religious statues in my home. Dream catchers, Ouija boards, angel cards, tarot cards. Get rid of them in Jesus' name. Crystals, get rid of them. Accursed items, get rid of them. Don't even play. Don't even give the devil a legal right to be there. They must go. They must go in Jesus' name. They must go in Jesus' name. And I'll answer your guys' questions after this. I'll answer your guys' questions after this. Listen, I don't know about ashes. I haven't done the research in that. You're going to have to pray about that. Somebody's ashes. I, I don't know. I don't know. Cremation was pagan in the Bible. Doesn't mean that it's pagan right now. But uh, I personally wouldn't keep ashes of a loved one. Personally. I'm not saying get rid of your loved one's ashes. You got to pray about it. I haven't done enough research, but I personally wouldn't have my loved one's ashes on my mantle. That's just personally to me because they're not in there. They're not in there. They're in heaven or they're in hell. Hopefully they're in heaven, but they're in one place. They're not in those ashes and keeping around uh, just bur a burned up dead body. That's what ashes are. A, bur a burned up dead body is a little bit weird to me. Okay, so get rid of them. Let the Holy Spirit guide you and lead you tonight as you get rid of things. All right, I'm going to answer your questions because there's a million questions coming in now. Also, please pray about giving to the ministry. All of our content is free. I'm not afraid to ask you guys to sew because we're supported by the viewer. Less than 1% of our live audience even gives. And that's the live audience, not including the ones that watch later. So you can give now to support us right there on the QR code, right there in the links. We will be starting monthly partner calls in very, very soon again as things get uh, less busy. Thank you for praying for my daughter. She broke her elbow on Thursday, but praise the Lord, she doesn't need surgery. Tomorrow night, we have the Domino Revival meetup at 7 o'clock. And go get your tickets to the Domino Revival playing in theaters all over the country tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. And don't miss that. And then I will be in Texas October, I'm sorry, November 18th, 20,000 seats, Greenville, Texas. Info's on my website. All right, let me read the chat and answer your questions because we've been live for an hour and 20 minutes here. So here we go. All right, I got rid of all the statues and rosary. Yes, praise the Lord. Good job, Grace. Get rid of those statues. Get rid of those rosaries. Get rid of anything where Jesus is on the cross. He's not on the cross and he's not a baby. If you have Mary holding Jesus as a baby in your house, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Aromatherapy, I don't know if, enough about it. 
Pickleball. No, don't get rid of your pickleball paddles. Okay, pickleball is not demonic. Keep your pickleball paddles. All right, Jared. Don't get rid of them. But you do need to get... Oh, you're on Oh, you're on YouTube, Jared. Okay, bro. I see you. I was going to rebuke you for being on Facebook, but you're on YouTube. Unicorn bracelet. Um, I mean... Oh, I just lost service. Am I still here? My internet says zero. No, don't disconnect me. Don't disconnect me. No. No. Let's see if we stay on. Oh, uh, we're I'm getting I'm getting kicked off here. Come on, reconnect. I'm hanging on by a thread. Reconnect internet. I don't know. I might be gone. I might be gone. No. The devil is a liar. Let's see if I can change my bitrate output. Am I back? Am I back? Did I save it? Are we going to end it tonight? Let's see. The internet completely went out. Are we back? Let's see. We're back. Refresh the feed. We're back. I saved it. I did a quick save. Uh, I don't know about Dungeons and Dragons, but it sounds a little bit sus to me. But I, I haven't done the research on it. Again, guys, if you're asking me about specific things, you need to be led by the Holy Spirit. I also have a video coming out tomorrow night, even though I'll be at the theater. And then I have a video on ho about Halloween coming out Thursday night. So if you celebrate Halloween, don't watch my video Thursday night. It'll ruin you. It'll ruin Halloween for you. Okay. Just warning you now. All right. I'm back. I'm back. We saved it. We saved it. We saved it. Uh, what do you think about family members watching over us in the afterlife? I don't think that's how it works personally that they watch over you. Their Bible does talk about a cloud of witnesses, but I wouldn't turn that into family members watching over us. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't teach that family members watch over us personally. They may, I just wouldn't teach it because I, I don't see it in scripture. All right, we're back. Oh no, I'm getting cut off again. Ah. Well guys, the links to give are there. I'm back. You guys can pray about giving, monthly partnering, go get 70 sermons, 20% off the merch store, all that stuff. Please pray about giving if you are blessed tonight. We've been live for an hour and 20 minutes. So if you are blessed tonight, pray about giving. Listen, if you're asking about Nintendo Switch, PS5, let the Lord lead you. For me, I was addicted, so I had to give up all my video games because it was an addiction. So God might say you need to stop watching sports. God would never tell me that because you couldn't pay me to watch sports. So do you see? I can't say don't watch any sports because for me, I wouldn't even watch sports. For you, you might be addicted to watching sports eight hours a day, looking at every fantasy football stat there is and not praying, not reading, being obsessed with sports. So you got to go by your own discretion. Yes, I'm drinking Hint Water. Watermelon is, is the best. All right. I'm trying to read all your comments, guys. I got to make sure I don't give them any free promotion. I'm going to put that there. All right. Uh, someone said gnomes are wicked. I don't know. I don't know anything about gnomes, so I couldn't tell you. I don't like speaking on things I don't know about, so... Uh, if someone says they're wicked, look into it. Everyone keeps asking about lawn gnomes. Are lawn gnomes like a popular thing? I don't know. I would be careful with superhero stuff in general because a lot of it has, like I think there was a movie, Mr. Strange, a Marvel movie. It's completely occult, completely demonic. If you look into the whole story of Mr. Sh Mr. Strange, I think, it's all about black magic and occultism from Egypt and uh, all that stuff. Don't. So there is some superhero stuff that's very occultish. You just need to look into it. I can't just say blanket statements about like superheroes or about this or about that. Chucky. <laughs> yeah, Chucky's definitely don't watch Chucky. Get rid of the Chucky doll. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream tonight. I'll hang out for a bit here while my internet allows me to. The water tastes like TV static. No, no, no. It's not. It's not a. Uh, it's not sparkling. It's not sparkling. I hate sparkling water. This is not sparkling water at all. It's just, it's flat. It's flat. It's good. Radar Apologetics said, stay away from the occult. Amen. Honestly, video over. I could have just went live and said, stay away from the occult. 
But sadly, some of you still get involved. So I had to give you reasons why. Yeah, this just tastes like water and then it has a hint, hence the name, at the end of a flavor. And I really like it. But it's not sparkling. I hate sparkling water. Oh, my wife loves it, but I... Uh, sparkling water is no, 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 no. Uh, I already talked about video games. It depends on the game. What about expensive fishing rods? Listen, I still have some expensive fishing rods. If the Lord tells you to donate them to me, then hey, I don't need any more fishing rods though. I got a bunch. TikTok is, I would not recommend being on TikTok. I put content on TikTok, but if you're scrolling, letting an algorithm show you what it wants to show you, I think, I think it could be dangerous. And it just sucks you in. I've been on TikTok before. It's like 30, 40, 50 minutes. You're like, what did I do? I just wasted my time. Resident Evil games. Yes, that would be considered a game you should not play. Guys, everybody has their own convictions and their own walks. So you have to go by your convictions. Again, the giving links are there. Pray about giving if you are blessed by the stream tonight. The Bible clearly says not to pray to anyone else but God. So praying to Mary violate scripture violate scripture and i already showed you guys tonight veneration is the same as worship veneration and worship both have the same definition so you can't say we don't worship mary we venerate her it's the same thing so no statues no religious statues salt lamps i don't know anything about them lisa i'd have to look into them i covered 10 things tonight guys there's a lot more stuff i could cover it's just maybe we'll do a part two Uh, the Bible says there's one mediator between God and man. It's the man Christ Jesus. One mediator between man and God. And that's the man Christ Jesus. So Mary would be a second mediator. St. Peter would be a third mediator. Joseph would be a fourth mediator. Paul would be a fifth mediator. There's one mediator. You don't need to go to his mom. You can go directly to him. What about fishing lures that look like demons? That's a good question, Jared, because you know there are some. That's a good question. Salt lamps are not demonic. They clean air. Oh, cool. Okay. I don't know anything about salt lamps, so I won't say anything about them. I already have my videos on tattoos. I personally do not believe tattoos are for believers, and I've personally convicted about it. I will not get tattoos, but you can go watch my video and come up with your own conclusion. Praying to Mary's meter, we can, of course, pray to her. No, 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 no. That's the thing. The Bible says not to. The Bible teaches against praying to Mary. Is it safe to bring a baby to the Domino Revival movie? Yes, you could bring a baby. It's safe to bring a baby, yes. What about grounding? I don't know enough about it. I don't know enough about it. We will be live. Guys, I want to mention this as well. Next week, we will be live on Halloween. But we're not going live at nighttime. We're going to go live. We are canceling Halloween this year. I'm sorry, guys. My video comes up Thursday about it whether you should celebrate it or not. And then Tuesday, we will be live on Halloween, but we're not going live at nighttime. We're going to ruin everyone's Halloween and we're going to go live in the early afternoon because there's no point in going live on Halloween night saying, this is why you shouldn't celebrate Halloween. We're going to go live in the early afternoon. I believe me and Angela are going to do it. And we are going to do a live stream on Halloween, God willing, and tell you why you shouldn't celebrate it in a few hours. <laughs> so yeah, we'll have a prayer, mass deliverance. While the devil's out there, filling people we're going to be casting them out of people we're going to do mass deliverance and talk about halloween in the afternoon of halloween what is that october 31st i believe uh, i already talked about video game consoles yes angela will be with me god willing on tuesday and i say god willing because who knows the way the world is right now i don't know if we'll even be live tuesday who knows i don't know is it wrong to have a statue of a landmark? No, that's not wrong. If you have a statue of a landmark, that's fine. That wouldn't be considered an idol or a god. The Conjuring movie, that's a huge no. It's a huge no. Thank you for sharing your biblical view on an important topic. Oh, I lost it. Uh, and my family and I have said I was pagan. How do you tell us this? Uh, okay, wait, that's something else. Sorry. Okay, too many comments. I should have put it in slow mode. I'm sorry. Yes, Jared, you can come over on Halloween and cook pancakes. Yes, we will be live Halloween afternoon. Early afternoon. 
So maybe like noon. Harry Potter, that's a huge no. Harry Potter, straight demonic. The fact that... Oh, I'm not even going to go there. I'm not even going to go there. I'm not even going to go there. With, with Harry Potter and people trying to say Harry Potter is about Jesus and all that. Slow mode is not of God. I personally can't stand slow mode because I, I, I can read the comments fast. But I know some people can't stand being in my chat because there's too many people typing. And guys, thank you for being here tonight. We had great numbers. I think we peaked at 3,800, which is awesome. Last week, we had 5,000 something, which is great. So uh, thank you guys for being here. I don't take it lightly every time there's a lot of people on the stream live. It's, it's a blessing. Obviously, if we spend the time to make messages, we want more people to hear them. That's the goal. Uh, I don't do Easter Bunny. I'm, I'm, listen. <laughs> There's kids watching. I don't want to ruin anyone's life here. I get it. All right. I get it. I love when Nico laughs. Me too, Jared. We have, actually, Jared, we have a laugh clip coming out tomorrow of us laughing. Um, all, let, let me just say this, okay? Because there, there's kids in the chat watching here. So I don't want to ruin people's life. And oh my gosh, I never, my kids. All... All of the creatures, all of the mythological creatures and people on all the holidays we don't do. That's all I'm going to say, okay? That's all I'm going to say. You guys get it? You got it. Praise the Lord. Your mods appreciate slow mode. I know. I'm sorry, Emily. I, I, I'll remember next time. I'll remember next time. When there's going to be a big stream like this. Yes, the Domino Revival meetup is tomorrow at 7. Guys, if you want to meet in Manteca, we're watching at 7. It's completely sold out, 300 seats. They just added a 9 o'clock showing. So you can still go to the 9 o'clock showing tomorrow in Manteca, AMC 16, for the Domino Revival in California. It's all on my website. That will be 9 o'clock they're doing it, but you, but you need to go watch it. Tomorrow, the Domino Revival is out in theaters. Tomorrow's the day. Tomorrow is the big day. We've been talking about it over and over again. Let me put the ticket link in the comments. Tomorrow is the big day, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what? If that doesn't convince you, then uh, let's see. What do I need to do? The bird wants you to go. The bird wants you to go. Maybe I should put him over here because he's covering the chat. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. That's a little bit weird. Let's put him back here. Carl says, go tomorrow. The Domino Revival. Go, go, go. And remember, I will be in Texas November 18th in Greenville. Info's on my website. Guys, everything you want to know is on my website or on my Facebook or on my Instagram posts. Like, whatever info you need, I've posted about it. I've shared it. Just go find it. So, Carl wants you to go. Guys, we are not even going to go into Christmas. We've already done, removed these 10 items. We've stirred up enough people in the chat. This is not a Christmas stream. That's for another day. We will talk about Christmas. See you, Michelle, in Manteca tomorrow. I will be there early, and I'm sure I'll be there getting a lot of snacks and popcorn and uh, Slurpees for all my kids. I'm bringing all my kids with me tomorrow. I'm trying to remember the movie. I'm pretty sure it's appropriate. I'm bringing all my kids, so... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's appropriate for kids. I can't remember any parts that aren't. Guys, this movie is not... Like, the Come Out in Jesus' Name was a movie about deliverance, so I was like, oh, use discretion bringing your kids. This movie is about revival, so it's not... It's not about deliverance. It has deliverance moments in it, but it's not about deliverance. It's about revival. It's just about a bunch of different people that are seeing revival and how we all have come together and have our own part in it. But it'll stir faith as altar call at the end. It's going to be good. Can you record it on your phone and send it to me? Unfortunately, I'm going to be too busy watching it. You got to watch it in theaters, Jared. Will they be playing it another day? Um... I'm not allowed to say, but we'll give you guys info coming soon. Would it be okay to get a crucifix? I would not get a crucifix, personally. Carl says, don't worship him. Yeah, don't worship Carl. Funk pop characters? I don't know really much about him, so I can't tell you. Yes, there will be an altar call after the movie. Yes. And if, for whatever reason, they don't end up playing that part, which it should be there... Then stand up and do your own altar call and pray in your theater. So if that part doesn't come on in our theater, I'll stand up and pray for people. Y'all need to deliver it to theater because Taylor Swift Air Tour is going to be playing next door. Yes. Next door to us will be Exorcism, Believer, and Taylor Swift movie. And then in one theater, demons will be entering people. In the next theater, demons will be leaving people. So that'll be good. Have you watched The Chosen? Yes, I have all season three streamed on my page. I know there's a lot of Catholics that follow me. You can follow me. 
I'm just not gonna follow you. <laughs> that's all. I'm not, I know that sounds rude. I'm sorry, but that's that is what it is. You can follow me, but I'm not gonna follow you. There will be an altar call, salvation prayer, and all of that after the movie. Yeah, I have a lot of Catholic priests that ask to be on there in the Discord, and the answer is no. Not to be rude, but we're not having people come on teaching Catholic doctrine. This is my first live. Welcome. I hope you got to catch it from the beginning, because we're at the end. This is kind of where we hang out and talk. But uh, yeah, the main part's already over. The movie will be out later on stream, on Amazon Prime and all the other streams. Yes. Get your tickets. Get your tickets. TD Jakes. <laughs> you want me to have TD Jakes on the podcast? I could. We Catholic Christians are under the Pope. Yes. That is why um, that's, that's one of the problems. Yes, this is uh, 2,000 theaters, I want to say. Something like that. A lot of theaters. I am not going to follow you. What did you say? What did you say? I'm trying to find your thing. I am not going to follow you as you are against the Holy Catholic Church. Bye. Um, have a blessed night. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to everyone that's giving. Did my links not work? I'm not trying to be rude, but not one person gave on PayPal. Maybe you guys gave on the website. Let me see if my links worked. All right, listen, times are hard out here, I guess, y'all. It's all good. People, people give on the website and uh, Venmo, which I didn't read the Venmo. I need to start reading the Venmo again. Let me read the Venmo really quick. All right, if anyone gave on Venmo, thank you. Listen, times are hard out here. I get it. I get it. Times are hard. Times are hard. We ain't getting those stimulus checks anymore. Can I get an amen? Okay, did anybody give on Venmo? Let's see. Jolin King, thank you so much. Jolin. Jo I think it's Jolin. I probably said it wrong. I'm sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Nathan Benjamin, thank you for the donation. KJ Johnson, thank you. Venmo, K Bell, thank you. Tyrone Munias, thank you. Paige Pike, thank you. Evan, thank you, brother. Lois, oh, that was yesterday, thank you. All right, those are the Venmo. I'll make a cash app soon. But yes, you can give on my website. And you could also give on my Zelle and everything right there. And you can give monthly, whatever you want to do. So glad your daughter's arm. Yeah, my daughter's elbow did break, but she, they thought she was going to need surgery and she doesn't after all. Cannot figure out the Venmo. It's just at Isaiah Saldivar. It's on the screen. Yeah, people give throughout the week. They give monthly. I totally get it. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys. We're not beggars. We're believers. What's with the bird? Is he still on screen? Oh, the bird's just our pet. No, we don't have Mormons on, Catholics on, Jehovah's Witness on. No. We only have um, Christians on. Hopefully this video reaches a lot of people, but it is what it is, guys. The algorithm decides. We just put the content out, film the videos, and see what happens with the algorithm. It is what it is. I take off work. Is the movie streaming in Atlanta? It'll be in theaters in Atlanta tomorrow. Just go to the website. There was literally like a hair stuck to my glasses all night bugging me. And yeah, that was annoying. Go to this link and find your theater. But yes, it's playing in Atlanta. Uh, how did she break her elbow? She fell. Is the Domino Revival okay to take kids to? Yes, you can take your kids to it. $7 for a ticket? Oh, cool. Every theater is different. The theater chooses the amount, not us. Um, Any plans to come to Chicago? Not as of right now. I'm, t I'm going alone to theaters. All friends busy in Dallas. 
Why no baby Jesus? Because Jesus isn't a baby anymore. Jesus is not a baby. I gave on PayPal. Did it not go through? Um, If you gave on PayPal.me, it's a different site. The only PayPal that I can see right now is the one in the comments. Oh, maybe you gave the PayPal.me? Then yeah, that doesn't show up. The only one that shows up on my screen is the one that's pinned in the comments. There's two different PayPals. They're the same account, but they're two different ways. Thank you, Matthew36. Say God bless you, brother. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate you, bro. Bring on Mondo Gonzalez. I'll look him up. I don't know about essential oils or aromatherapy, so I don't want to speak on it. <laughs> I don't want to ruin someone's business when I don't know what I'm talking about. I was going to get an Mar um, uh, Archangel Michael statue for my uncle. I wouldn't get it, Sherry. I'm going to get off here in a minute, guys. Usually I go two hours, but I'm going to have dinner with my family. Uh, the Peach Hint Water is where it's at. I love that one too. That's actually my second favorite. Actually, I'm sorry. That's my first favorite. Peach is number one and watermelon is number two. Get cash up. I can't send until you do. I will have cash up soon. I just keep forgetting. I'm sorry, guys. Believe it or not, I have a life outside of streaming, but it's like, hey, I get on here and I do my thing. Have a fantastic night. Thank you. I'm going to get off here soon. There's still 2,000 of you on here, so I just wanted to hang out for a few more minutes. I'm grateful, guys. Every time you guys are in here, I don't take it lightly. Uh, I hope that I never go live and there's like 200 people and I just... I, I don't believe in falling off. I'm going to keep plowing, keep, keep staying on fire for God, and as long as we keep putting out content, we'll keep growing. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I don't... I don't like think, oh, I'm going to get on and there's going to be thousands of people. It's, I have to earn it. You know, I get on. It's the algorithm. It's all that. It's all that. But we got to, we got to do what we got to do. Uh, my wife made crack chicken and noodles. It's like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Chicken melted with cheese and cream cheese in a crock pot, all melted and shredded. It's really good. It's called crack chicken or cracked chicken. I don't know. Guys, we literally, we're going to do a cooking stream. Okay. We're going to have my friend Jared, who you saw on the podcast, him and his wife. These are like some of our best friends. We hang out with them all the time. We're going to have them come over and we're going to, I think this will be funny. All right. My wife could cook. I can't cook anything. I could barely boil water, but I want to have ingredients, two sets. The first set, I'm going to try to make it myself. And then the second set, they'll teach us and we'll have a cooking stream. It'll be fun. <laughs> Jared. <laughs> so we're going to do a cooking stream. It'll be fun. And it won't replace my Monday or Tuesday. But it'll be, it'll be fun. Dude, there is a hair in my eye. Where is this hair coming from? It won't leave me alone. Listen, I got five girls in my house. So, you know, there's hair everywhere. If you know what I'm saying. Okay, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. I'm gonna go have dinner with my family. You guys are amazing. Yes, Carl will be dancing as we end the stream. I love you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow night at the meetup. We have a video, new video tomorrow night, new video Thursday night, and I'm going to try to be live Friday. Guys, what's going on with the Friday stream? Every Friday I try, but it's like, eh, I think I'll just record and post this weekend. The, the Friday streams have been, yeah, I need to go. I need to start. I used to be for two years, three years. I, I missed maybe like one or two. For three years, I was every Friday on the grind. Have I become just too comfortable now where it's like i'm too cool to stream on friday i gotta get on the friday maybe i'll do like friday afternoon or something while my kids are at school i should do a friday afternoon but i gotta work something out guys i'm trying pray for me because yeah monday tuesday i haven't been doing friday maybe i'll go live this weekend i'll figure something out i love you guys i appreciate you guys we'll be at the theater tomorrow and it'll be fun okay love you guys bye Oh, hey, I didn't see you. I was just chilling down there listening. If this, if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Super easy, super free, helps a lot. All right, so right now, stop what you're doing, hit like. Okay, I'm going back down here. Bye. Love you guys, have a good night. There's power in the blood, and that's never gonna change. See you guys tomorrow at the meetup. Thanks for giving, Jesus monthly partnering, and donating. You guys are amazing. And Thank you. Accord, we're moving forward. Break every chain. Demons start to tremble.
Love you guys. Have a good night. Sorry if you're afraid of birds. Love you guys, have a good night. This is the best outro in all of YouTube. Come on, let's be honest here. Love you guys. Bye, guys. See ya. Have a good night. Goodbye.